thank you all for joining us. Um, just to give a quite a quick introduction to, to the event this morning before we, we kind of hand over to the, the stars of the show, uh, our speakers today. Um, Darren and I kind of came up with the idea for this, this series of events probably um, at the turn of this year. We had the first Digital Engagement Masterclass um, in London in July, I think it was this year. Uh, now we're bringing it up to our hometown of Birmingham. Plan is to take it on a bit of a road show up to the north of England um, early in the new year and then back down to London, probably early summer, springtime, something like that. Um, and essentially, you know, the essence of of this event, you know, we know that digital is becoming more and more important. We know that there's, there's changing trends and behaviours and apps and technologies uh, seemingly every week, every month. Uh, so the idea of this event is just to share the latest stories, strategies, best practices, thinking, uh, so everyone can have a bit of a kind of heads up what's coming down the road, but also what, what are our kind of peers working on at the moment, uh, what digital engagement techniques and tactics are really working uh, to drive those, those kind of outcomes that we're all kind of working towards. Um, we at Orlo are based kind of five minutes over the road from, from here. One of the reasons we wanted to bring this event to Birmingham, uh, for those of you that don't know, we've got kind of a really vibrant tech scene at the moment. Uh, we've got our own kind of version of Silicon Valley called Silicon Canal, which is, uh, <laughs> which is, which is based in, uh, in the heart of Birmingham. So there's a lot of really cool innovation going on in Birmingham at the moment. So it's great to bring uh, our joint event here uh, to our hometown. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a great, a great agenda of speakers this morning, a really diverse agenda. You know, we try and pull together a real cross-section of speakers from right across the public sector you know, to kind of pull together all those different touch points um, and hopefully give you guys uh, as many ideas uh, and hopefully a bit of inspiration uh, to go away and apply uh, probably tomorrow now, back in the office. Um, if you could, I really would encourage you to get involved in the conversation. So we've got a hashtag which you can see on the screen at the moment. So that's hashtag all own masterclass. So you know, if you can, really do get involved in the debate. Any kind of interesting slides that you see, any questions you'd like to pose, any thoughts, uh, any selfies. Everyone likes a selfie. Um, you know, get involved in the in the conversation. Uh, share your thinking, uh, and then everyone in the room will go away with even more kind of ideas to go and apply. Um, so before we kind of jump into it, um, you know, we've been working with the guys at Comms 2.0 for, for a few years now, uh, and as, you know, as well as being geographically well aligned, uh, you know, we, kind of, we share that same vision of you know, putting on great kind of free learning events. You know, we know that kind of budget is hard to come by, so we try and put on great events like this uh, where you guys can come along, have a day out of the office, uh, you know, which is you know, increasingly hard to come by, but if you can give yourself that, that space to think, uh, and kind of get, get your head in a different kind of zone. You know, we all know that there's kind of lots of, vet of benefit both to you, the organisation, your own mental health. Uh, so, you know, Darren and I are certainly keen advocates to put on as many events like this uh, to give you guys the opportunity to do that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so for the next few slides, I'll hand you over to, to Darren to talk through uh, a bit of an introduction uh, and just set the scene a little bit for today's event. Fantastic. Thank you, Stuart. And, um, yeah, do you want me to talk yeah, through the agenda? Yeah. Look at this. So, uh, and a thank you to Stuart and to Gemma for organising today because I think it's really important that we get a day out of the office. For some of you, it's probably the first day out of the office you've had this year in terms of coming out and getting some personal development and network. Networking's a funny thing, isn't it? It's a funny word. It's a, an opportunity, an important <coughs> chance to meet old faces and make new faces as well and to share ideas uh we've got some absolutely brand new and brilliant case studies today so when Stuart, Jem, and myself were talking about well who should we have for the Birmingham events um I'm really fortunate because on my travels up and down the country working with comms teams I get to see the brilliant work that takes place but very often it's never talked about it's never promoted it's never at events um not today so we've got some brilliant people who we're uh, really pleased. These are new case studies. These, these are case studies that haven't been seen anywhere before. So you're the first. So we're really excited. So we've got, um, first up, we've got uh, Donna and Julie are going to talk about lessons from Whaley Bridge. So really interesting story there. And I think you'd been in post about five minutes when it happened, and you're going to tell us all about that. So nothing like being thrown into the deep end, literally. So that'll be, that'll be fascinating. Looking forward to that got Jared from Bromford and Bromford have historically always been really good around digital and social and engagement and just having a chat with Jared before the start um, really different approach to how an organization uh, deals with customers 
Um, so looking forward to Jared. Uh, got a coffee break at about ten past eleven, if we're on time. We shall see. Um, then we've got uh, Richard Shilton, who's ex Virgin Trains, Yopa, and Green King, who now works for Orla. So that's going to be a really interesting slot because. Rich was someone who actually was an Orlo customer who kind of paid and bought the system, used it, kind of built the, the social media team at, at Virgin Trains, which I think is kind of a Rolls Royce of how to do social media customer services. So that's going to be really interesting. But now he works with Orlo, so that's going to bring a whole different dynamic to that. Um, oh, change of colour. Then um, we've got... Uh, my pal Georgia from Bournemouth Christchurch and Paul Council. So I'm really looking forward to Georgia's case study. Imagine, I once had the opportunity to rebrand a council, twice actually, <coughs> which I actually love because I'm quite an anorak on these things, but it's a difficult job. Imagine doing it for three councils, three councils merged into one. So really looking forward to hearing Georgia's story about that. Lunch, 12.30, have we got something nice lined up, Stuart? Have yeah, we got some good grub coming? Yeah, so lunch. Buffet lunch at 12.30. Then after lunch, we've got colleagues from DVLA. DVLA are a brilliant team based down in Swansea. Do some really interesting stuff and not just you know, taxing of your car. They do hundreds of different things. So really pleased that we've, uh, we've got Liz and Ellen coming up. I don't think they've landed yet, have they? So I think they're on a train or in a car somewhere heading to Birmingham. Um, and then we're going to do panel, panel questions at the end. If any of the slots finish before their allotted time, we'll do some questions after each slot. If not, we'll do panel questions. Uh, and we should be finished about 12.30. Sorry, 2.30, 2.30. So, um, do you want to talk about this, Stuart? Yeah, yeah. So just to kind of, um, before I hand back to Darren, to set the scene a little bit. So uh, some of you will uh, have known us as Social Signing over the years. Uh, we rebranded as Orlo uh, pretty much around 12 months ago now. Um, the reason for that, essentially, which kind of leads me back to the, the kind of the point of today's event, is that you know, we've got all these different digital channels that we can talk to our customers on. Uh, whereas at Social Signing, we started out as a social media management platform, servicing that and growing hundreds of, of clients across public and private sector. We saw actually that a lot more um, digital touch points were starting to emerge. Uh, all of our customers were starting to say, you know, are you guys developing this and that? So we thought actually, you know, it feels like a natural time for us to evolve as a brand and an organization. Uh, so when we, when we rebranded last, uh, last October it was, uh, obviously having the word social in our name kind of limited what we could be, uh, to be honest. So we rebranded to Orlo, um, and as part of that we launched uh, integrated web chat. So we all know how convenient web chat is, you're on your coffee break, doing your Christmas shopping, whatever it might be, you can have that tab open, you can get back to your work tab. So a really convenient way to talk to your customers. Um, and we're just about to launch WhatsApp and SMS as well. So I think that's quite an interesting space for us. You know, we know maybe 12 months ago, WhatsApp and SMS would feel like a bit of a private space to speak to our family and friends. You know, I certainly have spoken to quite a few brands now uh, on, on Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. It doesn't feel quite so, so strange anymore. So, you know, I think that would be a really interesting space, that whole private messaging um, channel over the next, uh, next 12 to 24 months and seeing that grow. So, so yeah, so it's essentially... Uh, the, our kind of mission and uh, a new kind of purpose at Orlo is to bring together all these different digital touch points. You guys can manage it all from one place. Uh, it saves you having 10 different tabs open, 10 different systems. Because if you do that, you know, it does create problems in terms of integration, silos of data, and a bit of a disjointed experience for your customer. So if you're trying to encourage them to be digital first and to see digital as a great way to speak to you, certainly bringing those channels together is a great first step towards doing that. So for those of you who don't know us, that's just a bit of context in terms of uh, who us guys are at Orlo. Uh, back to you, Dan. Okay, thank you. Hello. That should have been at the start, shouldn't it, really? Yeah. Um, so, just really quickly then, and I think, so I, I'm, a background for me, I was the creator of, of Comms 2.0, um, which was really <coughs> set up to fly a flag for communicators and for communications teams, and to provide as much support and help, and been doing that for eight years now, and I think today's kind of a bit of a culmination, isn't it, because today's all about providing support, providing learning, showcasing some brilliant work, Equally, you all sat in the room, you all also have done brilliant work this year, and so if you've done that, you know, don't be shy about talking about it, about writing about it, about presenting at events. It's really important in terms of the reputation of your organisations. 
but actually selfishly for your own personal profile as well, it's really important. So if you've got great case studies and you want to write blog posts <coughs> for Coms 2.0 website, for the Orlo site, you know, do shout. And if you've got work that you think you'd like to talk about, perhaps at the Orlo Masterclasses uh, in 2020, do let Stuart and Gemma and myself know because we really want to hear about your good stuff. In my experience, every team is doing some good work. It might not be brilliant at everything, very few of us are, but everyone's doing something really well, and I think it's important for us as comms people to, to shout about that. Um, so that's the website, so if anybody's not had a look at it, do have a look at it. It's the finest communications website in the world. You must go and have a look. Um, if you haven't done so as well, do sign up for the new e-magazine, um, and I think all over are going to contribute to the next one. So it's got... Loads of exclusive content, free giveaways. In, so in the first edition, on my travels, people kept saying, do you not be really useful to have a good old-fashioned comms grid up on the wall so we can say, what we're doing this week? What are the priorities? But actually, cunningly, when your chief exec or whoever it comes in, into the office that says, I know you're really busy, but could you just do this? You can now point to your comms grid and go, yes, chief exec, we can do that for you. Which one of our priorities should we drop this week to focus on this new one? <laughs> It's a bit crude, but actually I think it works. So um, got, I've got a, a, a limited edition hard copy here. Um, so <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to give this away to so the person that asks the best question of our presenters today. So um, <coughs> how are we going to judge that? We'll let Gemma decide. Yeah. We'll let Gemma decide. So Gemma can decide which is the best question of the day, and you'll be the proud owner of that comms grid. And you can put it up in your office wall or even your bedroom wall if you're really into that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> Really quickly, before we get onto the star turns, as, as, uh, as Stuart said, um, Stuart said, what are your three predictions for, for kind of social media in 2020? It's like, I felt under pressure then. Um, I think for me, it's, we've been in and around social media now uh, in the work scenario for 11, 12, 13 <laughs> years. We know enough about it now to know what works and what doesn't. Um, for me, there's still more work to be done with some and it's not a criticism it's just because you're really busy but it's about really smart planning and using all of the data and the insight and if that data and insight doesn't exist it's about getting hold of it that might be commissioning your own research that could be something as simple as a twitter poll or a facebook survey but really understanding the landscapes that we're working i love this this is from <laughs> phil Dewis at Le anyone from leeds here today no. This, uh, this is from Phil Dewis at Leeds City Council, um, who partly, and I had one of these when I was in-house, partly this was obviously to understand the landscape in Leeds in terms of digital and what we used to call traditional media. Actually, it's really useful when, if you work for a local authority, when your elected members come in and ask you for yet another press release, you can say, yeah, we could do that elected member, or we could make use of all these digital platforms that are now available. You might have heard of them, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. But really useful, again, to have the evidence and the insight to be able to point to these things. And I think there's a job sometimes internally to, to inform people. The landscape has changed massively, and it's continually changing. This is shifting sands. I think number two, and this is relatively recent, isn't it? But I think it's going to be really interesting to see the impact of Twitter saying, right, we are not going to carry political ads, which um, I think is really brave. I think they're to be commended for it. And, you know, given what happened three years ago, and let's not go there today, um, we saw, you know, some pretty negative stuff has come out of the campaigns that were run in 2016 on social media. So I think that's great that Twitter have done that. Let's see what Facebook and others do. And I think this is a keep a watching brief on this because this is going to have an impact on our work next year. And I think thirdly, um, the thing I find most and I think the, the biggest pressure on teams right now is time. Everything you see today, you can do but you've got a million things on your to-do list and you're really busy and no one's going to come along and give you extra time. And Julie and I, we were chatting, weren't we, at the start, just about giving yourself the time to be creative. <laughs> Your best work won't happen stuck in a call centre, distracted with emails and meetings and passing trade, stopping you every five minutes. It's about getting into the creative space, whether it's a coffee shop or a, uh, an art gallery, wherever it might be, wherever you work best. That's where the best work will happen, and I think it's really important for teams to be a bit more selfish about diary time and just blocking out some time to be creative. So, back to Stuart. 
Okay, yeah, so just to kind of follow on from what Darren said before we hand over to our first speaker, the landscape is changing constantly, uh, but I think there's been some really kind of key mo moments over the last 12 months or so. Uh, obviously, the data breaches, uh, you know, I think building those kind of trust issues around social networks, how we use them, how, uh, how our kind of customers and our communities uh, perceive that we use them, uh, making sure that we use them in kind of ethical ways. Um, obviously, new trends, the rise of, uh, of Facebook groups becoming more important, uh, paid advertising, you know, it's, if you do have an important message, you've got to put some kind of pounds, shillings and pence behind it now if you want it to reach the news feed of your certain audience at a certain time. Uh, obviously, influencers, uh, not maybe always the kind of Instagram picture-perfect influencers that we see, but actually, you know, who within our networks uh, that speaks to the same audience can we collaborate with to extend the reach of our messaging? Um, you know, so it's always kind of worth thinking about and how you can grow that organic reach. Um, customer engagement, I think, you know, we've seen lots of uh, high-profile bad examples of, uh, of social customer engagement across the years from American Airlines, uh, different kind of things over here. You know, so you know, the glare of public um, of social media is always kind of there with us, which is really important. We kind of we've got our kind of customer service, customer engagement plans really kind of nailed down. Uh, and obviously, being human, you know, it's we know that human, natural, authentic content really resonates with our audiences. Uh, the algorithms within the platforms themselves are actually now favouring this type of content. Uh, and that certainly is the key underpinning how to drive that engagement. So really strong visuals, a bold personality, um, you know, and kind of using that, that kind of human content, faces of people, your audience, that's what really kind of resonates with, uh, with the people we're trying to speak to. Um, Darren and I do an annual piece of research, um, probably around Christmas time each year, so look out for that in your inbox, the survey coming this year. Uh, but certainly from the earlier 2019, I wanted just to flag up a couple of trends just to set the scene a little bit uh, before we go into our first speaker. So and the first finding here is that you know, year on year, no surprising, social media volumes are growing. So the volume of messages that we're receiving, inbound messages, are growing year on year. But actually the perfect storm really is that resources aren't growing in line with that, with that demand growth. So we're having to do more with less. So you know, if we are trying to make a really good first digital impression, it's really important that we've got the resources, the people and the plans in place before we open those floodgates uh, to give our customers that first great impression. So just something to think about. Um, we have seen a change in this topic over the last three or four years that we've been doing this piece of research. Uh, so whereas there's maybe a bit of a, a disjointed approach over the years, maybe people having their own kind of uh, agendas and hymn sheet to sing from, we are actually seeing, particularly uh, a few months ago with this latest ebook and piece of research, uh, much more collaboration between comms and customer service. And again, if we can bring these departments together, okay, we know it's a case of winning a few hearts and minds internally, maybe with the, the customer service team, but if we can get on the same hymn sheet, uh, we can together produce a much better digital experience for our customers. But again, you know, sometimes buying the piece of tech is the easy part, but actually you know, bringing these teams <coughs> together internally, winning hearts and minds, that's the tricky bit. Um, so something to think about there. Uh, crisis comms, so obviously that's the theme of our, of our first talk this morning. Um, again, we've seen some great improvement in this area over the last three years. We've been doing this survey, uh, but there are still some areas within the public sector where, where people don't have a documented and more importantly rehearsed crisis comms plan. Uh, so I'm sure there'll be lots of learnings from the course of today uh, just in case things still do start to go a bit pear-shaped. Usually it's on a weekend uh, or on a kind of late at night uh, that you've got kind of a plan in place that can kind of kick into action quickly. And finally, uh, barriers to digital transformation. So what barriers, obstacles do we need to remove to bring to life some of these digital initiatives we're going to look at this morning? So unsurprisingly, uh, it's the usual suspects. So lack of funding. So how can we be creative? Uh, so I spoke about kind of organic reads, collaborating with uh, other agencies uh, on kind of joint initiatives is a key one there. Uh, culture, again. So how can we kind of get that buy-in with different teams and departments and bring them together behind the scenes to produce a better digital footprint. Um, being risk-averse uh, uh, or unwillingness to take uh, 
take risk or kind of make changes. So again, that comes back to the culture piece for me. You know, how can we kind of get buy-in from those different departments, flag up examples of where a certain <laughs> initiative has worked well elsewhere to get that buy-in. Um, and obviously a lack of agility, you know, so how can we be flexible? How can we maybe remove some of those legacy systems that may be holding us back uh, to give us that kind of agility to move and adapt to these changing digital trends? Okay, uh, enough from me and Darren. Hopefully that set the scene a little bit uh, and give a bit of a backdrop.